Hello there, welcome to episode two of Grill the Pasta. And we're uh, coming up to that time of the year in October where uh, we have, Fenton has become very popular now, yeah. Halloween. Halloween. And uh, it's the, at that time of the year where um, people become more um, interested in the supernatural. Walking mm. around, trick or treating, starting up. Do you know do trick or treating? Do you? No, Absolutely you not. Know. Right. Okay. So we're going to look at some. I got some scripture for you first of all, right? Yeah. Now, and the question is, are ghosts biblical? Mm. And we're going to. I'm going to talk about sort of like um, um, contacting the dead as well. Okay. So I think I'm not quite sure that <coughs> we should separate the two, right? Mm. Um, so are ghosts biblical? So we have examples in the Bible. Right, which doesn't mean it's it's right, but there are examples in there, sites like Saul with the witch of Endor yeah. in one Samuel twenty eight seven, and yeah. we've got uh, Mark six forty nine. I'll read them up for you. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost, hmm. and cried out. Yeah. So we've obviously got a situation whereby we've got one where there's a, there's a seance taking place and one where there's like a, a phenomenon which they, people of that time and, and today, relate to. It's ghosts. Yes. Right. So yes. it's not a new thing, it's an old thing. Mm. Luke 24, 39. Behold, behold my hands and my feet, that is, it is myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. Yeah. So Jesus is saying, look, I'm not a ghost, that I'm physical resurrection of Christ. Amen. Um, and in 1 John 4, 1, we have believe not every spirit. So, um, now going on to the other one where we've got the, the glass on the table. Yes. Uh, my <laughs> right, but if you've got the glass on the table, move around the Ouija board, um, it says in Deuteronomy that it's prohibited in the Old Testament. So we have this in the Old Testament. So stuff must have been going on in the Old Testament as well yeah. with witches and whatever. Yeah. Mm. So it's prohibited uh, to deal with what they call familiar spirits. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that one. So obviously I can see a clear prohibition in contacting the dead. Correct. Right? So we were on the same page, yeah? Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, now this is where I'm a little bit more... I, I was of the assumption in Hebrews 9, chapter, verse 27, it is appointed unto man once to die, and that's it. There's yeah. nothing else. So I'm talking about the, what they call we call the intermediate state now, aren't we? Right. So when we're alive, we're like that, it's body and spirit. Yeah. And at death, they, we, we separate. So death is the separation of the body and the, and, and the, and the, the spirit. Yeah. Do you agree with that one? Yes, yes and no. Yes and no, okay. Yeah, yeah. you're not wrong. Yeah. Not wrong, okay, but let's, let's take that, just simplifies <laughs> yes. it, it's, it's the separation of the body and spirit. Yeah. So we have the intermediate state. Um, now, when we die, is there, is there, is it clear that at the point of death, biblically, you go either you're either asleep in Christ, is one view. Yeah. I'm going to ask you your, your views on the intermediate yeah. state. Um, but is there a possibility that ghosts can, or the spirit of the, the, the dead, mm. can not necessarily move on straight away? Yeah. Right? And uh, I'm saying yes because yeah. I'm following you, not because I'm agreeing with and, the statement. And, 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 right... I can say to you, to, I'm going to bring a bit of Roman Catholicism into this as well, if you don't mind. Yeah, right, we'll have a laugh. So, no, <laughs> right, now this is the logic, right? Yeah. I can ask you to pay, pray for me, mm. right, because you're alive. Yeah. St. Paul is alive in heaven, mm. and the saints are alive in heaven, right? So, 
when we talk about talking to the, the spirits, uh, can you, I, I personally wouldn't risk it myself, but angels as well come into this. Can, what's your, how can we put it? What's your view of ghosts? Is there a, a chance or possibility that ghosts can exist? Okay. So over the job. Okay. Sorry about that. Look, if I've been a little bit vague and confused, it's great. because it's a, a topic. I've always been quite clear. Once you die, you either go to yes. the road or you don't. Yeah. But I'm, I'm slightly modifying my position because when I think of all the supernatural things that go on, I'm now slightly open to the possibility that uh, a spirit may not move on straight away. Okay. Okay. So before I answer, Go on. I need to address something. What's this programme called? Grill the Pastor. Grill the Pastor. So this is John's brainchild. No, 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 don't, don't you carry on. Right? And I love it. And I love John. Um, and for the authenticity of this discussion, you can <laughs> confirm I've had no preparation whatsoever. No, none preparation. So we That's just... why it's, you've been surprised to him, see? Yeah. So, so I, I haven't come with Bible verses and, and what have you prepared. Yeah. Um, so, so give him some slack, yeah, all right? I'm asking. Because I know there's some people out there who's going to be, ah, oh, well, see, but, you know, this yeah. is totally it's spontaneous. Grill the pastor, spontaneous. Uh, the, the foreknowledge I had was seconds before we pressed the record button. Correct. When you announced Correct. the last video, what we were doing next. Okay, yeah, um... Right, Where do we, how do I start answering this question? Is there a possibility of ghosts? Okay, so Jesus talks about uh, the rich man and Lazarus. Yeah. And he says there that um, when the rich man dies, he goes to hell. Lazarus goes to yeah. heaven. And um, he's in the bosom of Abraham, isn't he? Yeah. And between them is a gulf that no man can Correct. cross. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I take the view that when you die, you 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 face judgment, and um, based on whether you're trusting Christ for your salvation or not, depends where you go for eternity, and uh, there's no way back. Right. So if Christ is your your only saviour. You go and spend an eternity with him. And if you have chosen other things for your redemption, God will honour that choice. And um, you will follow a path in the opposite direction of eternal love and life, which is eternal death and hate. And that's it. So you don't see any possibility, because I've always taken the traditional reformed yeah. position. Can I use that? Yeah. That, but that once the soul leaves the body, it's immediately with the Lord. Mm. Yeah, a redeemed soul. A redeemed soul. So, with that said, I don't discount supernatural things happening here. Right. And people seeing what they believe is ghosts. And you would put that down like the traditional one, as is all demonic. Or angelic. Ah, right. Yeah. But it says in Galatians, even if an angel of light comes and, and presents, well, an alternative gospel, let them be a curse. You've got to be careful. So you might see your dear old late grandmother, who you loved because she gave you sweets as a kid, come to you and say, you should stop smoking. And you think, well, that's my dear grandmother, who I love, and they told me something good to do. So this must be from God. But no, it, it's, it, if that image is, is and that, that teaching has taken you away from the gospel, away from redemption, away from salvation, away from Jesus, it's a distraction. It's of the devil. However nice, your nice, this image of your grandmother must be. It's not, now if your grandmother is in heaven, if she did do the impossible, and cross that chasm, she isn't going to tell you to stop smoking. She's going to tell you to repent and follow Jesus and get yourself to heaven with me. 
And so this, all she's going to speak about is the glory of heaven. Um, with that said, I th I th as I said, I believe that concept of them coming back from heaven is, is an impossibility. Um, you re mentioned um, the necromancer, didn't you, in, in 1 Samuel can I Can I tell you something, the secret? Well, it's not a secret now, is it? Yeah. <laughs> cool. um, my family are very much, um, not my wife, obviously, but yeah. my, my family, my, my brother um, is, a, is, is a spiritualist, and mm. my mother was into that as well. Um, I, I have seen something which would be regarded as supernatural yeah uh and a lot of people out there will probably a fruit cake or whatever you must mm. have been smoking something yeah yeah and <laughs> strange things do happen but strange enough right you can i i can go into a house or you i've never been gone into a place or a house and you thought ooh, yeah yeah right i can go into Northern, mm. and I, I can f feel like in the Old Testament you had the 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 the, the Shekinah Shik glory yeah. and all that. You can feel the presence of the Lord, mm -hmm. yeah. And I find that you can do that when you go to churches. There's a in yeah. some churches there's there's, there's a, a, a warmth, um, mm. safe. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah. So, because, but, but then, then I I was, I've got nothing to back that up. Mm. So I first came to Nodford as an itinerant minister 12, yeah. 13 years ago, and I knew the presence of God here. And I was offered pastoral positions in other churches who were lovely, wonderful churches, but I knew God wanted me here from that very first time I walked in. And Nodford, humanly speaking, then was a lost cause, and the Lord's blessed since. But I knew his presence, absolutely. And we've known his presence a lot in recent weeks, haven't we? Mm. He's been very present. And um, that's why church is so important, because you can confirm this amongst many witnesses. Um, so yeah, I believe in the supernatural, of course, and I believe these things happen, um, and people can see something that they believe is a ghost. Um, well, the disciples saw Jesus and thought he was a ghost. Um, but yeah, what 1 Samuel 20 is a very good chapter on this subject, because... Saul calls a necromancer mm. to call the prophet Samuel back from the grave to give him advice. Yeah. And as I said, no preparation, but from memory, there's three statements that this uh, was that, that this was going to. There was three prophecies made. Yeah. Only two of them came true. And if Samuel is a prophet of God, which he is, all three of them would have come true. This wasn't Samuel brought back as a ghostly image. This was a, 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 a demonic, a demonic uh, image, a demonic right. copy of Samuel. Because if it was Samuel, all the prophecies would have been correct. He's a prophet of God. Um, that's that. So I suppose this has a follow-on question, which is how do you know that these signs and wonders are from God? Or are from the devil and the simple answer to that is what you do next after seeing them does it bring you to your knees in prayer does it bring you to your Bible does it bring you to your local church right the fruits yeah okay, if it that. doesn't do those things and it distracts you from prayer Bible church it's the devil because mm. where does the devil not want you to be on a Sunday morning Church. Correct. So where does the devil not want you to, what does he not want you to read every day? The Bible. And he doesn't want you to pray, does he? So if these images distract you from these things, if they distract you from Jesus, they're not from God. But there are things that happen that bring you closer to God. Mm -hmm. And that's him poking through the cosmos saying, I'm here. Do you know, I had this, this, this ridiculous conversation in work. There's an atheist, out there, an atheist. Yeah. Likes to take the, um, the, the Michael out of me as well. Right? He hates yeah. the God he doesn't yeah, believe yeah. in. So yeah. he doesn't believe in God, right? But I asked him, what do you think of ghosts? And he said, oh yeah, I've seen one. 
So yeah. it's got this atheist <laughs> who doesn't believe yeah, in God, it's an edge but, he, he, but he, he said he's seen a ghost, yeah. right? Which is completely nuts. Yeah. yeah. You see it as well with aliens too, don't you? Yeah. People believe in aliens. And I've got a theory on this. Can I say this as part You've of You've got your theory. I, 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 yeah. I, I, Mike, go on. Yeah. yeah, so I'm not discussing whether there are aliens or not. The, the, the possibility is there are because it's just the universe is vast and the chances are there might be. Um, whatever. They're part, if they are, they're part of God's created order. And he would have provided for them anyway. Yeah, if, if they were sentient, redeemed beings that he wanted in heaven, he would have died for them. What we do know is that Christ died for us. Hallelujah. Um, I, I make this joke that with aliens, if they get to us before we get to them, they'll be more advanced. And we know they're more advanced because when they come, they say, take me, to, take me to your leader. They want Jesus. Yeah. If they, if they get him, they're more advanced. They'll probably preach the gospel. Right. That's, that's my argument. Uh, no, but the, um, I think people are attracted to aliens because... It is a religion because it's um, it's based on a level of faith, mm -hmm. um, and it's a religion that doesn't ask you to do anything. So you know, as a human being, you're a meaning-making um, entity. You know, even cold, harsh, uh, natural. Uh, atheism, secular materialism, still attribute meaning to the material. That's what science is all about. Coming up with theories based on what you find in patterns in, in the material world. That is still a theoretical principle that's built on an ethic. Like you, you wouldn't scientifically discover things if you didn't think that discovery was good. So it's always grounded in an ethic that is beyond the material, right? So in that sense, the belief in aliens and ghosts and all of this stuff, it's still a religious practice because you, you'll create, it's theory based. And, um, but it's one that, that gives you no responsibility. Mm. So people love it. Because I can believe in aliens and have this view outside of self and outside of material uh, well, that makes me feel special because I know more than the guy next door. But that alien isn't telling me to love my enemy. That alien isn't telling me to feed the poor and visit the sick. It's not telling me to get up and come to church. He can't help preaching, can he? Yeah. He can't help, he doesn't stop. So yeah, that, that alien's great because if I, I can believe in something that gives higher meaning and purpose mm. uh, to my life, but I can still play golf on a Sunday. Brilliant. I think we're on the same page. Yeah. It's not brilliant, we, by the way. No. You're going to hell if you have those views. You right. need to repent and follow Jesus to right. get into heaven. I think I think we I, I'll agree with you on the uh, on the the, the uh, not allowed to contact the dead. The mm. only thing I'm a little bit sort of like a little bit still open on is the the, the, the point of death, the, the intermediate state. The, mm. Is it immediate or? Whatever. Yeah. And, and I'm not going to, I'm not in no sort of rush to find out at this moment, shall we say? <laughs> it's, it's something that I, I fluctuate in with the immediate state, intermediate state. Yeah. Because I, I take the view that when you leave this mortal coil, you enter into eternity at that point. Mm. So your next waking moment is with the Lord, um, and you begin heaven. Um, but then there's scriptures that, that speak very much. Of an intermediate state. Um, some people make much of Jesus with the thief on the cross, and today you'll be with me in paradise. And is paradise different to heaven? And um, yeah, did Jesus go down to hell? Well, I reckon he went down to the place called the, the abyss, mm. which isn't hell. Yeah, see, are there these different states? Yeah. Or, when they, or is the abyss hell? Is she or hell? Are they the same? Well, the demons... Just different names for them. The, the demons, didn't they wonder, they asked, you're going to send us to the abyss, isn't it? Mm. Uh, was that yeah. correct? But yeah. are they different names for the same place? Or are I they see. different names for different places? Are they different states? Yeah. And that's that's what we've... What I come back and forth with a lot. My Where I suppose I am, you could argue, overly sensitive of the immediate state is that has been abused by Roman Catholic doctrine. 
purgatory right. to justify purgatory. Right. So it's almost like they've got a second chance of salvation yeah. once in their state. So pay me and my bishops lots of money and we'll pray for your deceased. So you can go up a notch. We're, we're on the intermediate state, mm. I, I might get this wrong. So if anybody out there correct me, but it's, uh, it's the intermediate state where you've got purgatory uh, and the ghosts that are in purgatory come mm. back to ask for help so that the Christians pray for the ghosts, yeah. uh, for the deceased, so they find rest mm. in out of, and then come out of purgatory. Yeah. That, that's, is that, that's, so, that's kind of the understanding from an RC, as in, mm. not RC Sproul, as in Roman Catholicism. Catholicism. Yeah, and that's my fear with it. You know, if, if you labour too much on the intermediate state, do you fall into the trap of the heresy of purgatory? Hmm. Um, yeah. We're going, we're going off the subject there. Yeah. But do you start praying I, for I, the dead I, and what have you? I, I, I'm not going to chuck the baby out with the bath water with the intermediate state, mm. uh, sorry, with purgatory, because when I die, I am, there's, there's still stuff in me which is. Yeah. Uh, me, you know, I make mistakes. Yeah. yeah. Sin, as it were, and defaults in my character, which can't go to heaven. Mm. So there's a cleansing process. I mm. I don't know how well, that, God does that, yeah, but it's that, it's the, 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 I yeah. suppose once you're saved, the blood of Christ covers. covers. You're sanctified yeah. then until your moment of death. death. At that moment of death, that's when you're ready for heaven. Yeah. That's it. Sanctification is done. You're ready right and even if that second beforehand you still carry mm. you're still in your sinful flesh but at that moment you're ready yeah right well thank you john thank you i think we'll end it now so we'll uh, look forward to the next discussion and next grill the pastor um what should we talk about predestination versus free will or we go for that don't give me any warnings, because I no. want it to be authentic. Oh, oh, all right, then I won't. We'll, all right, scrub that. Um, we'll wait and see. Yeah. Perhaps they could message the channel. It goes yes. to you. If they've got any questions, yes. you can then filter and do what you want. Yes. But I don't want to see them until I sit opposite you with a camera. Yeah. So thank you for joining us with Grill the Pastor this evening. Uh, thank you. God bless. bless.